Capacitation refers to sperm maturation in female reproductive tract. In this video, I am going to tell you what is capacitation and how it occurs. Hey everyone, welcome back to HM Learnings. I am Harshita, the creator of HM Learnings, where students come to clear their concept and to get the study material. Make sure that you subscribe my channel. So today we are back on the another video of the reproductive system that is about the next part which is the capacitation. So in the previous videos of the uh, reproductive system, you have seen about the male sexual act and also about the semen examination. So you remember that the male sexual act ends with the ejaculation of the semen in the female reproductive tract in the deeper parts of the vagina and after that the sperm from the vagina it has to transport there to the part where the fertilization is going to happen. So first we will see how that translocation happens and while during the translocation what are the biochemical changes in the sperm happen and how those biochemical changes is going to help the sperm to fertilize the ovum. Okay so now uh, immediately after the ejaculation what happens the semen in the vagina it gets deposited because of the coagulation and this helps that the semen hold holds in the deeper part of the vagina for some time now after the coagulation what happens there would be liquefaction and liquefaction after liquefaction finally the sperm will start its transport so during coagulation the semen is in the semi solid state which is decreasing the mobility of the sperm but after the liquefaction the sperm motility increases so it will start the transport so transport from where to where from vagina to ampullary portion of the fallopian tube now how does that transport happens so it has been seen that few sperm reach the ampulla of fallopian tube only within 5 minutes of ejaculation so this is a, a surprising fact because if you if you consider the length of the fellow uh, length of the female reproductive tract it is around like it is it can be around 10 cm so within five minutes the sperm could travel that much distance so how is that possible so this could be possible because of the following reason first one is a flagellal movement of the sperm so we already know that the sperm is having a tail which is having the microtubules and a molecular motor so that is going to assist the sperm in moving forward and the velocity of that movement is around 3 mm per minute in the female reproductive tract so if you remember the previous video on the semen examination there we have seen that the uh, the, the sperm which has been taken from the freshly ejaculated uh, semen sample in that if you recall the sperm motility it came around 25 micrometer per second if you convert that into uh, mm per minute it will be around 1.5 mm per minute so this velocity is almost the twice of 1.5 millimeters per minute which is in the female reproductive tract so how does that velocity becomes twice that is because of the presence of capacitation so we will see that also Second thing which is assisting the sperm in its transport is the smooth muscle contraction of the cervix, uterus and the fallopian tube. So the smooth muscles of these regions contracting in such a way that they are going to push the sperm from the lower part of the female reproductive tract to the upper part. And this contraction is being induced by the prostaglandins in the semen and also from the oxytocin of the female which is released during the female orgasm now another thing which is you know the part of the whole or you can see the the um carry home message of this video is a capacitation of the sperm so as i said that during this translocation process there are certain biochemical changes which are happening in the sperm itself and these changes ultimately increasing the sperm mobility the fertilizing capacity of the sperm and also the navigating power of the sperm to reach the ovum and fertilize it so what does exactly capacitation means so it is a second extra testicular sperm maturation process which occur in in the female reproductive tract while its translocation to ampulla so if you remember that we have already talked about the sperm maturation that there are two levels in which the sperm maturation happens the first one is the is the is in the epididymis so and the second one is in the female reproductive tract so the sperm taken from the testis is not is not having any mobility is not having any fertilizing capacity so it will be stored in this epididymis where it acquires a motility where 
it requires the fertilizing capacity. The sperm which is being taken from the uh, freshly ejaculated semen is having the reduced fertilizing capacity as well as reduced mobility. So that is uh, so that is what uh, the capacitation which is occurring in the female reproductive tract, which is increasing, is further increasing its mobility and further increasing its fertilizing capacity. So it refers to the sequential biochemical changes, which involves the changes in the protein of the sperm and the lipid of the sperm. Then these myochemical changes lead to what? The hyperactivation of the sperm, that is increased mobility. You can see from 1.5 mm per minute to 3 mm per minute. Then the navigation of the sperm, it's not only the you know movement, but also the direction, where to go, where is the ovum. So that directional clues which are coming from the ovum, it has to follow the directional clues. So the capacitation process helps the sperm so that it can follow those directional clues to reach the ovum. Third is the increased fertilizing capacity of the sperm. So in what way that it could be able to bind to the zona placidusa triggers the acrosomal reaction and also the penetration of the zona placida. So we will see about these things in detail how it is happening. Also uterine and the fallopian tube secretions are going to wash away the inhibitory factors which are present in the semen which is depressing the sperm motility and increase its activity further. So now we will see the first process, the first biochemical chain which is a li lipid changes in the sperm membrane. So there, there is albumin which is present in the female reproductive tract. It is going to remove the cholesterol from the sperm cell membrane. So in the male reproductive tract what happens that the secretions they are also secreting the cholesterol which gets accumulated on the sperm cell membrane. So the albumin which is present in the female reproductive tract is going to remove that cholesterol from the sperm cell membrane. And because of that what happens there is change in the location of the lipid rafts. So what is lipid rafts? Lipid, lipid rafts are basically the specialized regions of the sperm uh, of the cell membrane which are richer in cholesterol and sphingolipids and these regions are the regions which are containing the receptors and the proteins which are involved in the signaling. So earlier before this uh, cholesterol efflux what happens that this, this lipid rafts are actually uniformly distributed throughout the membrane of the sperm. Now because of this cholesterol efflux, the position of the lipid raft is going to be changed from all over the membrane primarily to the anterior sperm head. So it will be present over the membrane which is surrounding the acrosome and this is having the receptors, this lipid raft is having the receptors for the layer zona placida. So the sperm has to bind to the zona placida which is a glycoprotein layer surrounding the Side. So for binding to that layer, the receptors are present on the sperm membrane. But these receptors are, uh, you can say, all, all over distributed around the sperm membrane. Now because of this cholesterol change, what happens is these receptors, instead of spreading throughout the membrane, they are actually clustered on the anterior part of the membrane, which is going to come in the contact with the zona placidua layer. So in this way, it is helping that the sperm could interact with the zonal placidua layer of the oocyte and after uh, interaction what happens there will be an acrosomal reaction which will help in the penetration so after the zonal placidusa there will be egg so the structure of the ovum is already being you know is all the video is already being there so if you haven't watched that video please watch because then only this part will become clear so in the upcoming video of the fertilization we will see that how the acrosomal reaction happens how the penetration of zonal placidusa does that happen but up to that point you should remember that the lipid changes in the membrane they are going to help the interaction between the sperm and the zona placidosa ultimately leading to the penetration of the sperm through that layer to reach the egg membrane now after that apart from the lipid changes there are lip protein changes also which happens in the sperm membrane now what are these changes so for that we will refer to the diagram so this is the cholesterol efflux, this is a sperm cell membrane, this is the cytoplasm of the sperm. So this is the albumin which is present in the female reproductive tract and this is going to remove the cholesterol from the sperm membrane. Because of that cholesterol efflux, what happens? There is activation of the bicarbonate channel and there is activation of the calcium channel also. So both the channels are going to be activated and there is influx of the bicarbonate and there is influx of the calcium. 
okay so because of the influx of the bicarbonate and calcium the increased intracellular bicarbonate and increased intracellular calcium is going to activate a soluble adrenal cyclase or you remember adrenal cyclase so adrenal cyclase will then generate the cyclic amp which will activate the protein kinase a which will cause the phosphorylation of various proteins and they this will ultimately lead to the hyperactivation of the sperm so this explains that how the capacitation is going to do the hyperactivation of the sperm also because of the increase in the calcium level inside the uh, sperm what happens a molecular motor the dynamic which is present its activity increase leading to the hyperactivation and also because of the uh, phosphorylation of these proteins the sum proteins which are present inside the membrane they will navigate from here to the sperm cell membrane and one such membrane is uh, one such protein is the ismo protein which is critical for the sperm egg fusion so by this way the capacitation is leading to the hyperactivation of the sperm and also you can see the capacitated sperm has a fertile increased fertilizing capacity so calcium influx occurs because of the activation of the calcium channel because of cholesterol efflux also bicarbonate channels are also going to activate the calcium channel and negative membrane potential is also going to activate the calcium now the last part is that how the capacitation process is going to do the navigation part so navigation may there are three processes which occurs rheotexis thermotexis and chemotexis so you know that there is carbonate influx so car carbonate influx is going to raise the ph so because of the rise in the ph what happens that there there is activation of the calcium channels and those calcium channels help the sperm to do the rheotexis what is rheotexis rheotexis means that the sperm will sense the direction in which the liquid is coming in which the liquid is flowing and the liquid is actually flowing from the ov duct from the fallopian tube towards the uterus so in that way, way it will sense the direction in which the fluid is coming and it will sense that direction and uh, it will move against that direction to reach the ovum next is that it will be able to follow the thermotexis thermotexis means that it will sense the temperature gradient okay so tem it will sense the temperature gradient and after sensing the temperature gradient it will move towards the higher temperature so between the isthmus part and the ampulla part of the fallopian tube the ampulla part is 2 degree celsius more hotter than the isthmus part so the sperm will sense that temperature difference and move towards the ampulla this sensing could be possible because of the capacitation third is the chemotexis so certain chemicals are being released by the oocyte or by the cell surrounding the oocyte which is going to bind to the sperm and activate the calcium channel so these three calcium sensing mechanisms is going to make sure that the sperm will navigate and reach the ovum okay so this is all about the capacitation so in this video we have dealt with that the sperm has finally reached the uh, ovum and now in the next video we will see that how the fertilization is going to happen so these are the references of this video uh, the major part has been taken from the developmental biology book uh, if you want to read more details you can refer to these books so if you like this video please like share and subscribe my channel till then keep learning